So now work to a few uh, examples in setting up a basic simulation in the way that I've just reviewed. I'm going back to this example of a sphere falling in a fluid. And I'm going to add another state here, actually, which is the position Z. So you recall we had one state equation here for v dot and this is a nonlinear differential equation there's some constants here having to do with the buoyant force and gravitational force but this is the drag force that's nonlinear but i so solving the one equation here will give us the velocity but i also want to add what we'll call an information state And this, you know, whereas equation one here came from Newton's law, this second one here comes from really the definition of this, ver this positional variable as the velocity. So it's more of a kinematic relation. And uh, so I now have two state equations that I want to uh, solve for uh, through simulation. So on the single page here, I'm showing quite a bit of information. I have up here... The system function file, very brief, and then I have here sort of the sim file. So this is the you know the system equations, you know what we're calling the system function file. So these would be in two separate files. I just have them here together. Um, and the name of this one, for example, would be sphere.m, and this might be sphere underscore sim.m. That's the naming convention that I would use. First, let's look here. I'm showing that I've redefined some of the parameters in the original differential equation, just to show you, you know, this this is a nonlinear equation, but it's first order and it's separable, and I can integrate, uh, and from an integral table, I can find the velocity in closed form. So this is an exact solution, right? And it's kind of nice to have this just to compare with the numerical result. And uh, first, let me just show you a few things about this simulation file. Uh, sorry, the system function file. Note I've set global A and B because I'm going to need those parameters. I'm going to be integrating this equation just to make it easy. But I'll calculate what those are based on the original physical parameters. Note, uh, you know, when you when you can think of coming into this subroutine, every time this subroutine is called, you send it a time, a one time here, just one value, and then you send it a vector of states. Comes into this subroutine, and right away you name the first one is z. That's the position. The second state is velocity. So I reordered them that way. All right, so that means that your state vector looks like this, z and v. So that means when you write your state equations, right there, x dot is equal to two equations. You know, the first one here is v, because it's z dot, and the second one is the v dot equation, right? So uh, it's important how you ordered them. So I've I've then... And, and, you know, need to write those two equations. And note, again, how I'm using what I call physical variables. Z dot, that's the first equation, Z dot, is actually equal to V. And then V dot is this equation here, A minus BV squared. You see, this is what I'm talking about. You can clearly see whether you've written the equations, typed them incorrectly. And again, very helpful when you're debugging. Now I define my X dot as a vector, a uh, column vector with z dot and v dot in it, right? Sorry, yeah, there you go. This is z dot and v dot. Okay, so that's my system function file. Very simple in this case, but hopefully illustrative uh, and can help you see that this is a very efficient way. You know, all you need is, is one pattern here, and then you can begin using it to build your own, your own simulations. Now, this is the file here that would call um, this file through 
a an ODE solver. So note the first line. Sometimes actually I would have common statements before this with description of what the program is, say when I wrote it, uh, version numbers, when it was last corrected, that kind of thing. But anyway, the first functional line would be the global statement. This makes A and B global because I'm going to need them in here. I define parameters, gravity, gravitational acceleration, the density of the fluid rho, the drag coefficient for the sphere, and so on. Different parameters that were defined in the problem statement, the, vo the volume of the of the sphere and so on. And then, then I can compute A and B based on my physical problem. So you see I can compute these parameters and now they're global and then I can set up my initial condition vector. Well, I am releasing, this is my, my, my two initial conditions are going to be what's my initial Z, what's my initial V. I'm releasing it from position zero with a zero velocity. I'm going to integrate with a fixed time step of 0.01 seconds. So that, if I integrate from time zero to five seconds, the number of points I need can be computed this way. Actually, you should be careful here and make sure that you put a floor function here. Floor, that makes sure that you have an integer, okay? Sometimes MATLAB's a little forgiving on some of these things. Okay, now and I call uh, with RK4 fixed, sphere, and I tell RK4 fixed, hey, go look at sphere, Integrate that guy from 0 to 5. Here's my initial condition. Uh, use these many steps. And it returns to me um, a solution in, in these vector and array. Next step is I use that time vector with my analytical solution in this case to compute my analytical velocity so I can compare it to my numerically computed one. And then I go to plotting. And you can see in my second plot here is where I plot the second state. This kind of syntax, remembering how to access values from arrays, uh, the remembering which are, <laughs> which indexing value refers to the time values and so on. That's something you're going to have to uh, figure out. And sometimes you know it takes a little trial and error before you become proficient at using some of the MATLAB. Um, syntax and commands, but that's all part of the uh, exercises. Uh, here I'm plotting uh, the velocity that I solve for numerically against the analytical one. And actually, you can't see it here, but it, it's right on top of there. And that's RK, RK gives a pretty good solution for this, for this problem. For a second example, I just chose a simple mass spring damper. Very common. Uh, there's no force here. Uh, what I want to do is pull, you know, give this an initial condition and release it and watch the response. Again, an ex exact solution exists for this, but we want to just run a simulation. A couple of things here. I'm going to determine the response for the case where the mass is released from rest with the spring compressed by a certain amount. I don't think I use 0.1 in the example I'm going to show. I think I use a whole meter. Um, if uh, you can, if you're using a fixed step integrator, you need to determine what time step to use. If you're using a variable step integrator, all you do is say, hey, I'll integrate from a certain initial time to final time, and it, it will integrate across that time the best it can. If you know something about second order systems, then you know for a mass spring damper system, you recall the natural frequency is square root of k over m. That means that this system is going to oscillate, at least with a natural frequency undamped, of about uh, 10 ratings per second. You can figure out a time period and then say, oh, I want to chop up that time period, say, by 50 times to get a reasonable time step. And that can give you a kind of a, a first step and then you can start cutting down your time depending on what you're trying to do. So this is just one way sometimes that we use something that we know about the system to choose a time step. So here now again repeating. You see this enough times hopefully yeah, you'll see it's very efficient. The function I'm calling a z dot uh, mass spring damper system with time and the states are in z I have my first state is x, the position, uh, and that's the first one, z of 1, that comes in here. The second one is the velocity, z of 2. So now I have x and v as my states, and I can, again, refer to my state equations and write physical equations. x dot is equal to v. Makes sense. v dot is mi minus v times v over m, etc. So, again, I hope you see the benefit of using physical variables to write your two state derivatives. 
put them into your state vector definition and they all go out to here all right here's your call-in file so this was your system function file state equations here's your sim file make mkb global set those values now they can be seen globally initial time final time time step here you see i use floor to compute the number of steps see my initial condition is a negative one on the in, on the um, compression of the spring and rk4 and so on and you can see i, I compress my spring I, one meter release it from rest this is my velocity this is my position and um, the spring causes this mass to come back to zero and you can see the velocity jumps up initially quick example again to help you see how to use uh, build your system function file and your simulation file let's do one more unlike the other examples this one very nonlinear problem so there's no analytical solution in this case I have two tanks v1 and v2 equations are easy enough to write but v dot one is really just you know a flow coming in minus a flow coming out and um, that's flow coming in here less that flow, flow going out so you can write those two equations and then v dot two is the flow coming in here and then the one going out so i can write the difference between flows here and then i'm using a real simple uh, flow equation for all of this that says that the flow through any of these resistances and I'm calling actually I should have been a little bit more careful this should be something like E like the exiting so this is let's say one two and this is the exit this should be QE so any any of these Q's I'm saying I can model it by some coefficient K times the square root of a pressure drop and that pressure drop and then I can find in terms of volumes right so for example P well PS is the source P1 it, it, for, a, for a simple tank right is just the volume divided by the capacitance of that tank and pressure 2 uh, likewise is the volume in tank 2 divided by the capacitance in C2 I didn't want to Go through the trouble of sizing this so i just made everything equal to one even made the source pressure equal to one when i do all that i get a nice simple set of equations where i don't have any parameters makes a little simulation demonstration very easy uh, so i have just volumes on the right hand side which are my states volume one and volume two so you can see here function v dot two volumes in my two tanks i have time and vol a volume vector that basically has v1 in it and v2 and then I have my two state equations v dot one is the square root of one minus v1 you might you know be strictly you you you, you uh, would probably put uh, absolute value signs I should have done that here because you don't want to take the square root of a negative but in this case these volumes are always positive in the way I set up this problem but strictly you should be careful and put absolute values around these square root in the argument of the square roots Define my v dot v1 v dot 2 build your v dot in a very simple system function file I gave both of those tanks 0.5 as an initial condition and basically I just release it initial time final time 100 steps very straightforward so I release both of them from here that pressure causes volume 1 to climb and volume 2 empties right just one more example Note that none of the examples I showed here had any of the outputs. I'll show you those in another uh, lesson.